I've got a confession to make. I'm a procrastinator. But what happens when I procrastinate is I find new platforms and I play around with them and I've done just that again today. Today I'm looking at a Zapier alternative and I'm gonna go through the exact process that I take when I go through a new platform and also give my recommendation on if it's something you should look at as a alternative to Zapier. Before I even get started, I need to clear this up. I am a Zapier fanboy. If, if Zapier has one fan left on the earth, that is me. And the reason why is it reminds me of using an iPhone. It's super simple to use, it's easy to pick up, and it's easy to then share information with other people. So a non-technical user can start using it in a matter of seconds, which I think is really cool, bringing technology and automation to the masses. But what I'm looking at today is N. N8N. N8N is a Zapier alternative, but it's geared towards more technical people. However, they still boast the ability for non-technical users to be able to collaborate on the platform. Now, there's something very cool about N8N, and I'm going to go through that first, and we're going to look at the pricing. What caught my eye about N8N is they don't charge per step used in a workflow. Say if you had a workflow that has 10 steps, on other platforms that would cost you 10 instances. They just go off the platform run as a whole. So if you're dealing with long automations, like I am a more technical user, this may be more cost effective for you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to compare N8N's pricing between that and Zapier, and then I'm gonna jump in and actually create a workflow in both N8N and Zapier at the same time so you can see how difficult or how easy it is on either platform. So if we look at the starter price for N8N here, you've got 20, I think that's euros, 20 euros per month, which if we type in 20, euros euros that's 33 australian dollars so the their starter plan plan it actually works out to be cheaper than zapier's starter plan and with that you get 2.5 thousand workflow executions so that's the actual executions of the workflow as a whole not just a standard um, task like in Zapier and you can have five active workflows which is the same thing as Zapier over here for their uh, beginner plan which is $29.99 USD so if I convert that into AUD oops that's $45 so the starter plan for NAN is actually cheaper for me being in Australia than Zapier so that's one thing to consider if we look at the pro version which is 50 euros a month, so 50 euro, which is $83. So I'm currently on the professional plan just for uh, consideration here, and it's costing me about $100 a month, $113 a month, right? And I've, I've got so much in here that <laughs> if I was to move it across, it would take me forever. So one thing I would have to consider in this process is if you're already using Zapier, the migration piece is gonna be massive. So that's one thing. So in the professional plan, uh, you get unlimited zaps, which is great. I just realized I made a mistake here. 20, 20 zaps in the starter plan, um, that's fine. You get unlimited zaps, you get a multi-step zaps, and you get premium uh, apps, which are unlimited. So the difference in the starter and pro for uh, NAN is the fact that you get 10,000 workflow executions, which is quite frankly a lot. Um, they're really, really stepping up the the amount of um, tasks here. Well, the, not, the need to not have tasks. So 2.5 thousand workflow executions versus 750 tasks, like you're already winning there. Uh, and if we look at pro, 2000 tasks a month, uh, the equivalent of, of that, you can't even really bring it across, but if you're looking at 20,000 tasks, because every zap has at least two tasks. So if you have the minimum, uh, you're looking at 283 USD a month, which is ginormous. Uh, and then you don't get unlimited active workflows, you only get 15, which is a bit of a caveat. If you're a single user, that would probably be fine, but if you're doing multiple things in a business, then you might be uh, a, a bit a bit strapped for, for uh, the workflows, especially if you do a lot. However, you can increase that. So one thing I uh, didn't look at here is in the starter plan, yeah, they don't let you increase that here, but in the pro plan, you can up that to 120 uh, euros per month and then you've got 50K executions and 50 active workflows, which would be plentiful. That's something to think about. But let's start our free trial and we'll jump in and create a automation that is a relatively simple one, but let's get it. So when you've registered your account, it asks you to choose your plan because you do have to allocate, they don't have a free trial in NADEN. So that's one thing as well. Uh, Zapier obviously has their free plan, which is very limiting. You only get like five zaps and they can only be two steps. 
Uh, so you're going to have to choose a, a paid plan. I'm just going to go starter for the time being. And they do make you put your credit card details in. All right, so I'm in now. One thing that I like is this these testimonials here. I don't like tattoos, but if I did, I'd get one of N8N. That's hilarious. And taking N8N to my boss was probably the best decision of my career. So these kind of... Um, testimonials like they're not just like this allows me to do so much more with my work it's kind of quirky and i like that uh they're using a type form in here which is cool uh do you already know what it's like to build with n8n i'm just going to say yes uh do you what do you want to automate first syncing data between different systems notifications when something happens all right we're going to go syncing data are you trying to build any of the below create a new record in google sheets when something happens hubspot um yeah let's do something like that uh let's go other type form to Google Sheet. So nice and simple, and they give you a quick start guide, which I'm going to ignore because I want to go basically straight off the bat, and I don't want anyone to teach me how to do it. I want to see how user-friendly this interface is, and if it is as easy as Zapier. Because once you, once you are logged into Zapier and you're online, it's so easy for you to just press create a new Zap and get started. So this workspace starting up, I'm just gonna pause here and wait for that to finish. One thing that I should mention though, is if you are getting into automation and you are looking for a platform to start on, I would always just to, for you to understand the different logic that's used, I would always probably recommend Zapier. Now, the reason I say that is just because it's so easy to pick up. Now, I'm not paid by Zapier, I'm not endorsed by them or anything, and this video is not sponsored in any way, but in my personal opinion, people pick up automation a lot quicker when either walk through Zapier or they learn Zapier as their first platform. All right, so our workspace is ready. We're gonna click Start Automating. All right, so we've been placed into our workflow editor. I do like the look of this. It looks pretty similar to Zapier's new visual editor, which is, in my opinion, it doesn't really work for Zapier. I actually don't like it. I like the classic one, but that may just be me being an old todger. But the N8N workspace looks looks fine. It looks great. It's very intuitive where to start. Whereas in Zapier here, they're going trigger an action, like an event that starts with Zap, then an event that performs after it, which is, which is fine. Um, maybe with my education and knowing that this is what N8N is gonna do anyway. But if you are just fresh off the bat, this may be a little bit confusing, but we're just gonna do a very simple type form to Slack automation. So if we click on add first step, if we compare these two, one has to select a trigger. A trigger is a step that starts your workflow. A trigger is an event that starts this app. So pretty much copy paste right here. Uh, this here is quite intuitive. It, it allows me to see my common applications and we're going to have a look here as well. So this is pretty cool. The fact that it lets you go on a schedule, uh, run the flow every hour a day without searching for schedule or on a webhook manually, which is cool. I didn't know this was a thing. Manually click uh, on a button to start the workflow and when called by another workflow, that's fine. Otherwise, that's, that's fine as well. So if you on a workflow error or whatever. So we're gonna go on app event for this one and it's gonna give us a lot of different applications so there's a bunch on here we're just going to search for type form right off the bat and create new credentials so we are brought up with type form here so let's compare what zapier brings up in zapier you'd ask to decide what event happens first before you add your credentials in but with n8n it's going straight for credentials which is fine and if we click on create new credential so auth2 recommended or access token we can just press connect my account it's going to ask is this me i'm just going to press accept and that's pretty much it i would like a next button here instead of having to press x but you know that is what it is uh, and in type form we're going to go new entry we will sign in on my account as well so it's the exact same auth page between the two nothing really changes there but you can see that that now goes to a different color and allows you to press continue. So form name or ID, if we have a look, is it going to make me type it in? All right, cool. So we've got a bunch of my forms here that I can use to connect. I'm going to go coaching template offboarding and we are going to leave those two on and we're gonna press listen for event. Listening for a triggering event, waiting for you to create an event in type form. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to open up type form and submit something to it. So we've got the type form here ready to go. It's just a sample one that I have. I'm just gonna go at blah, blah, blah.com. One thing that this is doing is that Zapier doesn't always do is Zapier will just pull random data for you when you are setting something up so you something so you have at least something to play with when it comes to the different information so if we look at this here 
So if I choose the same form, it's going to test your trigger. And then when it, if it doesn't find anything, which it will, because I just submitted it, it will bring up that information. But if there was no uh, response, it would give me a, like, the, the sum, whatever that Latin thing is, that will let me, like, play with these fields without actually having submitted the type form, which I like because it allows you to set things up, then test. But this is forcing you to have a response in there. So, again, benefits to both, but it doesn't really matter. So we've got our event. So now, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. If we have a look, we can see on the right-hand side here, we've got an output, an output, and a bit of this is broken. So we might have to go back to Canvas, but that should be set up now. So if we click on this, you can pin this output instead of waiting for a test event. Open node to do so. So we're gonna click on, I've just deleted it. How good? So this is a little bit unclear. So I found this a little bit unclear, but if we press listen for event again, hopefully it'll give us a response, but it doesn't look like it is. So we're gonna go again and we're gonna press submit and now we've got it here. So now we don't have the pop-up that was waiting for us. So cool. And now that's fine. And if we open this node, how do I open this node? I don't know that. Oh, okay, double click opens the node and that's fine. So we can go back to the canvas. In Zapier, we were pretty much already set up without having to do the little bit of back and forth, which I guess NAN is more technical anyway. So that's what we're what we're gonna expect. So secondly, we're going to click on the plus and we are going to go into here and we're going to add Slack as our next step. So an action in an app, which is what we are going to want, but you can do a bunch of other things here like transform data. So you can manipulate the data that's come in. You can run code, which is cool. Uh, Zapier will charge you extra to be able to run code. So that's one thing if you're on the basic plan. So you can do helpers, you can do if statements, you can do different uh, different logic here, which is cool. So you can filter out things, which Zapier will allow you to do. It's interesting to see how they just output this. And files as well. Oh, okay, cool. So you can edit an image, you can create calendar files. I'm sure you can do this with different applications inside Zapier as well, but this is interesting. Again, more technical than your average user, but still good to have. We're going to choose Slack and we are going to add a, we are going to send a message to a group. And on the left hand, on the right hand side, we're going to look at here. We're going to look at the events in Slack. So if you have a look here, it seems that there are a significant amount more options for Slack in N8N than they are in Zapier. So if you have a look, and now this is probably based on Slack themselves, but um, obviously Slack has gone to the effort of creating these integrations or N8N have done them themselves. So if we have a look, we've got um, add reminder, create channel, invite user to channel, the basic things. But if we have a look here, we've got uh, user groups that we can enable a user group, we can disable a user group, we can update a user's profile, get a user's presence uh, status, get how many users, get how many stars, remove a reaction, get a reaction, add a reaction, that's, that's cool. Um, I'm guessing if they have that, you could probably set up a trigger from the reaction too. And there's just a bunch of these different endpoints that would probably be a part of just the Slack API. And you would probably need a little bit more uh, technical prowess in Zapier to do that using the API rather than just having them ready to go. So this is, this is cool on my behalf. So we're going to send a message. So I'm gonna say message, send a message, and we're going to connect our credentials again. And we're just going to press allow, wait the accounts connected. We're gonna do the same thing on the Zapier. So on the left-hand side here, we've got our parameters. So we've got the credentials to connect with, which is great. The resource is a message. So I'm assuming you can send a file or you can send a reaction. That's exactly right. So that's what we we're looking at before. We can send, which is great, send a message to a channel or a user. At this point, we're just going to do channel. And then if we have a look here, I'm just going to use this build channel that I have. And we, we can choose between simple message text, blocks, or an attachment, which is cool. And we're just going to say hi. And what options can we do? In include link to workflow, custom bot, so all this kind of stuff you can do in Zapier as well. And they kind of force you to do it in Zapier. So on the right hand side here with Zapier, it says the channel that we're going to send it to, the message text, we're just going to say hi. Do you want to send it as a bot? Uh, yes or no? Again, like you have to, uh, these are not compulsory because they don't have the little star next to them, but they are present and it can be a little bit more complicated than just the standard on the left hand side here. So if we were to execute this node now, Slack error response not in channel. So what's this say? 
might have to make this a bit bigger. Not in channel app process like API request. But I'm assuming this means that I haven't approved. So I'm not even sure what this error message means which Slack error response not in channel, which may mean that I've selected something wrong here. As it turns out, I deleted that channel and I'm not actually present in it. So if I just change this to general, I should be able to execute the node. Looks like it executed successfully. And if we have a look at my Slack here, you can say, you can see hi was automated with N8 and works. And then on the right hand side, if we finish off here, we can just go through this and press continue. And then if we were to test step, it would very simply send a test message. And if you look here, you can see the hide that has been sent inside Zapier. I know that was a little bit messy when it came to the actual implementation of it, but these are the kind of issues that you're going to encounter when you're learning a new platform. So. I thought this was pretty cool. I think this kind of video shows an insight to someone who has technical ability learning it. Um, my opinions on N8N is if you practiced it and you got good at it, it will probably overtake Zapier's capacity. I 100% know that it would overtake Zapier's capacity. And also one thing that I really did like was the fact that it's got so many different um, actions that you can have if for Slack, for example, the ability to have reactions and all that kind of stuff. So. I have been thinking about ways that can, that can be done recently and I think that might be something I start using in the future when I do need to do it. I'll probably look at running these side by side and and slowly moving things across to N8N but at the end of the day I'm probably just going to use Zapier because it's so much quicker for me to get started and get things up and running. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you guys again soon.